Hello everyone, the Chart Guys have been working on an introductory technical analysis course for quite some time now, and after surveying hundreds of traders with what would be the most sought after information regarding technical analysis, we came up with this course, When to Enter and Exit. It covers over five hours of the basics on when to enter and exit, and we feel after watching this course, it will help build a foundation of technical analysis knowledge, which will eliminate a lot of the uncertainty in the world of trading stocks. So the course outline, we go over the psychology of trading, establishing a game plan, the different indicators we use to signal a bullish and bearish entry, how to recognize support and resistance levels, poor entries, where traders make mistakes, exit targets, how do you know where to sell your trade, where to place stop losses, that's very important, minimizing losses is what keeps you in the game long term, my personal preparations, how I go about getting ready for each trading day, and then piecing it all together, utilizing all the information we just learned and how to apply that in the real world for making successful, profitable trades. As a bonus, we also include a lot of information on finding entries and exits utilizing patterns. And you can find these patterns on every time frame on pretty much any stock and commodity trading. And certainly being able to recognize those patterns can give you an edge as well. So we hope you will check this out. Again, it's an introductory level course. So if you are new to technical analysis and trying to get a firm grasp on things and seeming feeling a little bit overwhelmed, then this course is for you. I hope you check it out. Appreciate you watching. Checking in on CBISMJNAGRNHNDEV and OWCP, the USMJ sector, picking up steam here in January. And if you look back on the weekly chart at the five-year time frame, you will see this is no surprise as it is a pretty common seasonal reaction. Now, that being said, it's followed by a spring and summer that is absolutely dead for bulls. That has been the pattern. So this is not for investing, in my opinion. These pops are for trading and swing trading, sure, but you do not want to sit your money here and just let it sit because anybody that did that in 2014 pretty much lost 80 to 95% of their investment over the next two years. So looking at CBIS, it's a clear leader right now, and it's very interesting because MJNA is usually the sector leader, but right now CBIS is running hard and not many other individual names are doing so. So this is a huge move to the upside. And we had a member today lock in 100% gain. Congratulations to him. That was all him loading back here on the drop from the sell the news reaction to the votes. But look at this volume. This is exactly what the bulls want to see. That being said, we're getting overbought. And by exactly what the bulls want to see, I mean that we're ramping up with increasing volume every day. But we have a breakout to compare it to. Look how similar it is to back here. Increasing ramp up in volume. Great sign for the bulls that this volume is much more significant than it was back then, especially the dollar volume, because back here we're looking at 84 million shares at about six and a half cents. Now we're looking at 130 million shares up at about 10 cents. So that's a significant amount of dollar volume, 13 million shares, or I should say $13 million traded today, very roughly. But we're seeing multiple gap ups and we had one, two, three gap ups and then a bearish reversal candlestick signaling the temporary top. One, two, three gap up opens and looking for a red day tomorrow, or if not a red day, a bearish reversal candlestick could be a doji and a vault potential volume climax signaling the top for now. And that's exactly what happened back in at the end of December once this breakout started. So we had a tightening range and pretty much an ascending triangle pattern where you have your horizontal resistance rejecting three times and higher lows getting tighter and tighter. And then a clear volume spike. Look at the decreasing volume as this range got tighter. You'll see that all the time. And then a volume spike indicating the break has occurred. So huge gains for the bulls. If you are not already in a bullish position, do not buy CBIS. You are asking to lose money. You are very late and it would be chasing without a doubt. So do not enter a bullish position on CBIS at this point, in my opinion, unless you are day trading very, very quickly with a firm grasp on just how quickly things can turn around here and we can drop 5% in less than a minute. So from here, we'll be back testing the upper Bollinger Band as support. You can see on that first bearish day where we marked the top, we held that upper Bollinger Band support. So we need to update that at the open. It's going to be over 10 cents tomorrow. And in terms of resistance, we do have to zoom out multiple years, which is a good sign for the bulls, making back some of those losses since the 2014 pop 
Still a long way to go. We're not even halfway there yet. But resistance is up at 13 cents is the next clear resistance that I see. So I would not be surprised at all to see profit taking and a volume climax tomorrow from 13 cents. We'll check back in and see if that's how it plays out. But the bulls have done a nice job here on this, this breakout, no doubt about it. We built support after the sell the news reaction in November and now higher highs. And CBIS stands out because it is one of the only names that has broken the highs from the vote or pre-vote, I should say, back at the end of October, start of November. So other names not seeing any of this action. And the question is going to be, once we start seeing profit taking in CBIS and people start having some really nice gains hit their accounts with cash, are they going to be finding the next runner and looking for a laggard? And are we going to see another move similar to this one? And we saw one that was close. Oh, I want to go to GRNH next, and then we'll go to MJNA. But GRNH was very close to a breakout in a similar tightening range with decreasing volume. We had our lower highs, higher lows, and then we had a bullish break, but we couldn't get any follow through. And it's due to that dollar volume. So we rejected from the upper Bollinger Band resistance. Again, compare right here how similar this chart looks before the breakout and huge volume. And look at GRNH, pretty similar breakout, no volume follow through. A high volume day on GRNH is seeing a million dollars traded whereas a high volume day on CBIS right now is $13 million traded. So if GRNH was seeing $10 million of volume, we would be seeing a huge move to the upside. But as of right now, not the case. So we are still maintaining higher lows on GRNH. I'm keeping a close eye on it to see if this is going to be the next name that money funnels into, because we do have a nice little uptrend here on the daily time frame. Resistance is 11.7, the high that we hit. And there is plenty of resistance to look back at from consolidation leading into that vote. Let's get the complete picture here, zooming out a bit. So I'm picking out resistance at 11.8, 13.1, 13.7, and then 15.9. And back here, we were seeing dollar volume of $2.4 million traded roughly. So we do need that volume to show back up, but the bulls are in control of this uptrend over the past six weeks. Bulls want to see some follow through for tomorrow, a break of 10.6 and a move back up towards 11 cents. Weekly time frame really wants to close over 10.6, this 200 week moving average. You can see once we lost that level, we rejected one, two, three, four, need to close above that level to be looking back at the highs from before the vote, which CBIS has already broken. That would be a break of 15.9 if GRNH were up at that level. So still a long way to go must close tomorrow over 10.6 and turn this 200-week moving average into support to be looking good heading into next week. MJNA is not seeing any love. Bears are in control of the past few days, but bulls do still have the uptrend over the past two months. Holding this middle Bollinger Band, you can see it's key support. Consolidation, we've held it a couple times. Tomorrow, that's going to be in the upper 16 cent range. And if we lose it, we're looking down at 13.5 as the next support to keep an eye on. So very interesting that CBIS has taken over almost as if a lot of people with a lot of money decided this is going to be the one we run now, and that's the way it's playing out. And the other name's not seeing much love. So consolidating on MJNA, you can see we're not near breaking the high 267, 267, I should say 268 from before the vote. We're still well below that level and still bullish without a doubt on the daily and weekly time frame, but not seeing anywhere near any of the bullish action that CBIS is seeing. And MJNA is the dollar volume leader usually. And let's see here, we're seeing about $3 million traded today. So CBIS certainly taking over the past couple of days, but in terms of consistency in dollar volume, MJNA is the sector leader. NDEV consolidating significantly after a, a huge run, multiple hundreds of percent. We saw a big bullish reversal candlestick yesterday, and we did not confirm that candlestick. So the bears are still in control. We're rejecting from exponential resistance. It's driving the price down, and we close at the low of the day, showing the momentum is favoring the bears into tomorrow. So key support, 59 cents. Bulls need to confirm a reversal candlestick to stop this consolidation. You look at the weekly time frame, that's a good-looking weekly chart. Even though we've pulled back from 150, We've given back 50% in three weeks. You'd think that'd be dreadful, but you look at this chart, very clearly stair-stepping higher. So the bulls are trying to form a bullish reversal hammer this week. We close here or better tomorrow. Pretty much if we close, I'd say 72 cents or better 
tomorrow. We are going to see a weekly bullish reversal candlestick, but again, it has to be confirmed next week with some green follow through to resume this uptrend. So it's an important end of the week tomorrow for NDEV and an important week next week trying to confirm this reversal candlestick after a couple weeks of consolidation. OWCP is also consolidating, losing the upper Bollinger Band support. It's worth watching for a short-term bounce. The most common pattern you'll see after a breakout is reaching an equilibrium, where you have the breakout, the high, the low of consolidation, and then a bounce to a lower high. And that's a short-term trade opportunity. As of right now, 45 cents is support. Not an entirely convincing lower wick off of that support, but we can be scouting tomorrow. If 45 cents holds, that would be our stop level. If it looks like 45 cents is going to hold and we make an entry at 47 cents, let's say, we would get out if 45 cents were to break because that would mean we're likely headed down to at least 40 cents, which is where we had previous resistance and would now expect it to act as support. But the weekly time frame is a clear bearish reversal doji, so we need to be cautious, anticipating further consolidation next week, which is why any bullish trade from here would be short term because all of the gains that had been seen and realized over the last two weeks consolidation is likely and the weekly chart candlestick showing that with that doji at the top of the uptrend so keeping a close eye on grnh to see if money is going to come there after cbis and again i do feel that grnh would be a decent candidate just because the dollar volume needed to run it wouldn't be anywhere near significant if we saw like i said if we saw that cbis dollar volume in grnh we would absolutely be breaking out we just don't have that dollar volume today's total volume looking like about five hundred thousand dollars traded so if that were five million dollars clearly the bulls could run it into breakout mode but need that volume to show up so we'll see how the week wraps up definitely need to be picky and choosy here with these individual names not like the canadian sector where we see every single name running in breakout mode as it looks like like I said, it looks like it could be individual names being decided on to run individually as CBIS. No one else currently looks like CBIS right now on the daily time frame. So I appreciate you watching. We'll check back in at some point in the near future. Have a great night, and please don't invest in these names that are breaking out. You want to have a clear exit plan because they are going to pull back significantly. The last breakout for CBIS went from $0.73 cents all the way down to 5.3. So anyone in that name lost about 30% in a few days. So they drop just as quickly as they go up. Exit plan is needed. If it hits this price, I will get out, and then you need to stick to it. Otherwise, you end up in a situation where it's 2014, and you watch your money slowly drip away, and nobody wants to be in that situation. Thanks again. See you soon.